Hello from the Dynasty Typewriter. Once again, in grand fashion, Harmon Town is now in session. Let's bring out, we don't have a Spencer, but don't think of it as losing a Spencer. Think of it as gaining a Brandon Johnson, everybody. What up, Brandon? Thank you so much for having me tonight, Jeff Davis. You're looking good. You look great. Thank you. Uh, why don't we bring out the mayor of Harmon Town, Dan Harmon? Don't let the doobly do. Get you with your face. Okay. Yeah, I had one note. Uh, I got mad because uh, I w- uh, I'm, I'm recreationally house hunting, and uh, this will be a, 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 a sympathetic bit. <sighs> People will love this. I uh, just looking around for houses, and I don't like it. Uh, just went to a house, and they're like, "Hey, welcome to the open house," and like you can either take off your shoes or you can put on these special surgical shoes. Like you're Mark Wahlberg about to shoot like somebody in The Departed. I'm, like, what? Then I'm never buying your house. Fuck you. I'm take off my shoes. Is it a house or not? A house is a giant shoe. A house is a, a shoe for your life. I'm gonna ta- but well, if you buy the house, you get to decide who wears a shoe and who doesn't wear the shoe. Yeah, but I, this is bad mojo. How much sage can you burn to get rid of the fucking sh- uh, foot aphobe that lives there? Do you want to buy a house where the, they didn't give a fuck about people with their gross feet all over the place? I, in a word, yeah. I, I guess I, like, I don't. I don't. I don't want that mojo. Like, because that to me says that. Uh, Oh, uh, welcome to the house. Maybe you'd like to buy it. Uh, take off your shoes or put on special booties. That to me says uh, we 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 hit all the bodies in the attic. <laughs> they, they, like it's just extra special attention put into dishonesty. Look, we're not getting off on the right foot. Like, I, I, uh, no, 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 you are because I'm gonna tell you if I come into your house and I'm trying to, you know, let's say you have a used Bentley, right? And it's 150 thousand. You pay 200 for it, right? If I want to sit in that motherfucker with some mud on my feet, I'm about to spend 150. Right. So if you're about to buy a house, yeah, you might want to walk up in that. You might say, I don't even know if this shit's comfortable unless I got mud on my feet. Right. I think you're picking up what I'm laying down. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm buying some shit, I should be able to use it as I would use it. Yeah. You want me to live in this shit or you want me to, or you want it to be less dirty for the next person that might live in it? Fuck you. Yeah. I'm made of mud. I'm going to live in your house. (laughs) Fucking Dan Harmon. Don't ever ask me to take my shoes off. It's going to make your house more dirty, by the way. You think my shoes are fucked up? You should see my socks. <laughs> you know what? You deserve it. There comes my shoes off. All right. Anyways. <laughs> Let's get things on a more, uh, you know, I want to win the audience back. I feel bad for Liam Neeson. That's a great way to win the audience back. What are you, my jokes agent? Yes. Uh, they, <laughs> I... I get 10% of your laughter. <laughs> if you, if you represent the joke, you're like yeah. making calls. Listen, there's, there's a joke over here. Was it, uh, wait, what was his angle? What, what was he trying to... Uh, he, he was coming clean about the fact that he wanted... Black bastard. He was... He, <laughs> I think... Part, part of me is like, I won't click on any of this shit because it feels... It's, it's like like my general sort of like, ah, the internet's awful and all this stuff. I, but as far as I, but I also don't think it's one of those stories where like, oh, you got to do your research. I, I would, I believe that he was probably doing an interview. Uh, I think he kind of like, I, I've, I've done a lot of interviews, and I, and when you're on a roll, maybe you've taken an extra milligram of Adderall, and maybe you're at Comic Con, and you're like, someone's like pumping you up and being like, yeah, but seriously, why is Rick and Morty so genius? And you're like, this person, I can't do no wrong. Like, I want right. to try to explain myself. And and like I think he probably he he sidled into a confession about how crazy he was forty years ago, forty years ago, and this is all of our mistake is twice the median age of the people that control the planet. So none of them are ever going to go. Oh well, I get it. They're like this is my this is my realization. This is both my terror and my resignation. It's like if you lived your life on the internet as I have. You are now, you have laid down a paper trail, like a landscape of you being a terrible person from the age of zero to um, 46. 
now today's 10 year old is who's born on the internet. And I say this out of sympathy to today's children uh, because they have to have 35 Instagram accounts so that their parents can't watch them go through puberty. I, 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 I don't even, I can't imagine what it's like to be 20 today. It, it being, but, but, but also the problem is like they're 20 and they're going like, what? 40 years ago, you were racist. That's crazy. Like, like, but it's like, well, everything 40 years ago was crazy to you. You, it was, it, you weren't born. <laughs> it's, it's telling a story about like how fucked up he was right. so long ago. <laughs> I, I look, I, 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 Dan Harmon goes to bat for Liam Neeson. I, I fuck off. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, w I want us to stop oh, destroying each other. I want, I want the cloud that we're becoming. I don't think any individual is becoming a worse person how because of the internet. How does Liam know to not tell that story? Like, I, I, like if, it, if that happens... That's, that's the biggest tragedy of all. The answer is because he felt comfortable and he wanted to confess. What, what do you want to confess to him? That would be great, wouldn't it? Like, I, so, so it's like, am I supposed to stand here and say, from now on, forget it? Like, I, I go. You realize, I, every night I go to bed, I'm like, am I, what am I doing this for? Like, like it, it, it go the up and down. The answer is like to keep a gun out of my mouth because if I don't talk my mind into a microphone, it bounces around inside my skull and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Am I doing this for me? Am I doing this for other people? I don't even know anymore. I know that the day I quit, it, 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 I, I, it'll be, I can't quit tomorrow because it'll be uh, Dan Harmon uh, quits podcast in dust up over Liam Neeson uh, story. <laughs> <laughs> so now I, I have to now wait until it's gas prices. So, <laughs> now, now we have one more year of uh, MeUndies ads. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, I, I, I'm still waiting until it's, it, it, I, look, man, I... I don't think that there's anything that any individual can do because I think that every individual is actually a good person. I, I, the thing that I'm going through right now, I tell my therapist all the time, I'm like, I hate everyone, and I, except for anyone I meet. I, 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 I hate, but none of us are meeting each other. I, I, I just like, I hate what, we're, what we've become. I hate the cloud. I, 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 I hate this collective behavior. And I, and I said it before, like when the, when the weatherman was, you know, he's like, oh, he accidentally said the, the, the wrong word and some other thing. Like, I expressed the sentiment of like, out of sympathy for actually the people that get outraged, all of whom I believe, I give them credit as an American, like, I bet they don't want the power over whether someone gets fired. If you and I are on a smoke break out in the sidewalk, what we want to do is talk shit about Liam Neeson. We want to like, but, and we don't want a fucking drone to monitor what we say and then take it to his publicist and affect his career. We want to be able to, with all of our primate hearts, go like, that was fucked up. I didn't like that. I don't like what he said. That's the thing about this. And like, we want to be able to wake up the next day and go, yeah, I was talking a lot of shit. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I need to read about it. Yeah. It, 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 like, it, That's it, true. That's a human trait. It, it's, it's like, if you level the playing field, though, you can get away with whatever you want. What's that? What do you mean? I mean, what makes it difficult is that he spoke about a uh, group of people who were disenfranchised. But if you lift all the boats with the old tide, then you can talk shit about every boat. I still don't know what you mean. I, 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 I know. I, I, I'm not. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not supposed to. I want, I want, I want to know. I want to know. Literally, it's like, I love a good black joke if it's super funny. Because the super funny has lifted the tide because you are a craftsman who has made a wonderful joke, even at my own expense. Something that I love to laugh at myself, right? That's when we're cool. We're not cool if I'm broke as fuck and you're pointing at me as you make the joke. So what we want is a world where I can talk shit about women and Jews and gays because women and Jews and gays are doing so fucking well that even they're like, <laughs> I am a little weird. Right, but how does that, so do you th I mean, uh, like when Mr. Neeson was like, like making this confession, he's saying like 40 years ago, Bastards. He, he so didn't want, it was, it was that phrase for sure. My it was alliterative. <laughs> Yeah. And it was like clickable, and it was like I wish you would say my name with bastard behind it to my face. <laughs> now, it, if you say black in front of that, you kind of say my name because I like to go as Black Brandon some days. Black Brandon, <laughs> oh, Black I'm a, Brandon, I'm a, I'm a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, but black that's the Brandon. issue. The Man issue is Man. Whoa, Black Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> they got a brand new suit on Black and Brandon. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's the game. The game is if you lift everybody up, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, like, like jo- jokes should always be funny. Uh, if, if you're gonna tell a racial joke, the, the only rule is it has to be. Uh, they can't. You can't lower the status of the of the target. Uh, if if the if if it's funny that the person's black or Jewish or a woman or whatever, and, and they still win, that's a funny yeah. joke. I'm assuming we're supplant we're using the the joke thing as a template because like what we understand is jokes and like we know that he wasn't making a joke, right? He was, was making bastard. a confession, but he was it, it, it does it does apply like a, a a rubbing from joke to confession because in his confession he's still he didn't lift up while he. Uh, kind yeah, of confessed if you, if, that he if was you said, like, like, like dehumanizing. For, for yes. instance, like like I, I, there's a joke I made on TV once that was that aired, and it was a funny joke at the time. If I could go back in time, I would erase that from memory because it was not a joke. Oh, you have I, one of those? Aren't you adorable? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of one in particular. Oh, okay. And if uh, it, 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 it was funny at the time, if I told that joke today, um, I think it would. It would be horrible, and also I'm I'm sad that I said it once, a long time ago. And like, could we all retract a thousand things that we said? Absolutely. I think uh, I think that's how everybody. I mean, I maybe I'm unique in that I like you know I've I've kind of like I, I've aerosoled myself from the age of 23, going like, look at me, look at me, look at me. Every shit I take, every thought I think, and so every I'm, breath you take, I th- I, I, I every and, move and, you and, make, and all darkness and all of the time and all what I could get away with at the time, and so much misogyny, so much racism, so much so much unfashionable thought uh, in a world where it's moving so quickly. Like I. I am absolutely biased. I have an agenda when I call for forgiveness. Like we've lost our shame on the internet, which is a good thing because so much shame needed to be lost. It was being used to bring, hold so many people back, but we've also lost our grace maybe. We've lost our forgiveness. We, 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 we've, we, I mean, we are just recreationally and collectively hurting each other. I, it's not a, there's no call to action because I don't think you or you or you or you or you, any individual, I don't think anyone's actually becoming a bad person. I think that we're evolving into a collective organism that is doing some <laughs> terrible things if, to if, individuals. If we've all chosen a life where we all want everyone to hear us, they, they have to hear us be our worst at all times too. And then we have to learn to shut up. Uh, like... Like we're we're asking for followers, and we're happy every time we get more followers. But we're bummed out every time everybody heard us fart or burp or say something like that we should have thought twice before we said. Do you recall how did you how did you real, receive the real clear? It's not the forty years ago that he was racist. It was the current day use of bastard. So one of the things in all speeches, okay, we don't mind if you say black hero, black big dick. Don't say black bad parent. Don't say black bad bot. Don't don't do that. <laughs> so with okay. him, had he not said bastard, if he just said black dudes, would have been on his side. Okay, well that's getting really specific because maybe you did you say I, the the super specific like the way he because I'm imagining it again. I'm refusing to click and now I'm and yet I'm going like everyone let's just love each other. Yeah. But like he but he surely was characterizing himself as an unreliable narrator. No, he wasn't saying that word. You're saying just like. Come on, if you don't know how to navigate those waters in general. Yeah, because you say Adderall, Comic-Con. I say too many interviews, tired, telling stories, getting too casual. And he was just like, after my friend got raped, I went out and I wanted to kill the first black bastard that I saw. And I went looking for one oh, is the problem. That's like, The problem is that something happened to someone you knew and it caused you to be predatory. When the reality is, if that were true, I'd clean this theater out. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Gray. <laughs> um, boy, that's but I a, love y'all. <laughs> that's really that's that's really interesting. Like you thought that you think like he let down. Uh, that's what I think happened. His garden was like almost humble bragging about it. Like he was asked how he got into character. Um. Interesting, really interesting. I, I I want to tell you one thing. We're, we're going to bring our guest out. He's been waiting too long. And be, and and the 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 ladies and gentlemen, the, Liam Neeson. The pre- <laughs> <laughs> um, Dan, you, you do a good Liam Neeson impression. Do you, do you want to apologize for Liam? No, Neeson there's no. Jo- we're not doing that joke. It's not. It won't. It won't help anybody. I, I, that joke is obvious. Like, like yeah, I get it. They're biological killing machines. <laughs> 
It's not, we're not connecting those dots. But you, you just did it. I, 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 I'm going I'm to tell you in advance until the end of my career, which is obviously going to be shortly, given that it goes back to shit that you've already done. I, I'm going to continue to, with, with, with absolutely no uh, mistake that I'm in the uh, kind of like, uh, that, that it's not the, it's not the way to win a popularity contest. Like, I'm going to go with my heart, and I'm going to continue to side with the person, the individual who is who is currently at that point walking the plank. I don't care how bad, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I figure if they're out on the plank, like, I just want to feel bad for them. Like, I don't care what they've done. I, 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 I don't, I, I think that may be a lot of projection on my part where I'm just like, I, I spent so much time, like, I, I just feel like I've always been that guy. And I, I didn't get this far to like, I don't want, I don't want to like, like poke people off of that plank. I, 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 if they're, if they're walking it for a reason, then they're walking off of it. I, but anyways, I, I, you know, the, 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 like, like I wanted to say one, one thing to you, Sure. you, <laughs> before we bring our guest out, because I was, I was like, I, 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 I didn't. You know, Spencer dropped out, and um, and I didn't. So think sorry, I could, God loves Spencer. Everybody. I was, I was, I was thinking about the Liam Neeson thing when I was putting on my MeUndies, which are three times softer than cotton, <laughs> and I was having this like internal monologue in my head. And I, was, I started thinking about the Michael Richards thing, and the the weird turning point in the Michael Richards thing for me, and I'm, I swear I'm not being hyperbolic about the personalization of this. I remember distinctly, because this podcast is so goddamn old, I remember carrying the, the Michael Richards thing into Harmontown at Meltdown, and I remember talking to you and Demorge about it, like, like, like talking about it in the green room, and both of you guys, like, my epiphany was like, because I was coming and going, can you fucking believe this? And the two of you basically going like, yeah. <laughs> in a way that was like, yeah, that's the world we live in, and it flipped my magnetic poles because I it, it was like that's important. That's why I bring this shit up too because yeah. I'm like I'm like what is your hot take? Do you remember clicking on this Liam Neeson thing and like help me parse it? Because as a middle aged white guy, I'm gonna be like they're trying to take our rights away. <laughs> I mean, last real quick thing is that remember that he kisses Viola Davis so hard in that movie recently. I can't remember what the name of it is. And and there is this there is this thing that black celebrities are saying, which is you know he can't be racist because he is very intimate with Viola Davis in this movie. So I do think that that was way back in the day, and that he does work on himself, and that he probably isn't racist. It's just he doesn't know how to tell a story to the press. I well okay one more thing, and then we'll bring our guest out. Sure. <laughs> ra ra racism isn't it's a fucking like it's not it's not a blood type. It's a it's a phenomenon, right? It's like it's, it's not it's that a, phenomenal. It's like it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like basic. influenza. You can't eradicate it by finding people with it and burning them. You 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 maybe can state a purpose. You can state it, a mission statement. I'm against influenza. It goes Your back nose is so running, I'm going to kill you. It, but if you genuinely are against the principle, you should accept that it's fucking everywhere. Just rise the boats. If we all do that part, then we don't have to worry There's about it. There's shit we need to do to prepare for it, to, to deal with it. Nope. Starting with you admitting just that we're all boats. breathing. <laughs> okay. Just rise the boats. <laughs> I mean, I, I like to say, like racism is a spectrum. It's like it's like a it's a sociological phenomenon. It happens because it, it'll happen until the day race it, it stops. That you're severely underestimating the people that it affects. I. But let's I, bring out that guest. I thought. Okay, let's bring out <laughs> let's bring out our guest and get and get and get deeper and uh, uh, either more or less podcast worthy. I don't know. Um, uh, he's our new friend. He's 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 soaring up the charts. Uh, he's, he's currently resided in Portland, but, uh, if, uh, if ICE has it, uh, uh, their way, he'll, uh, he, he won't be in Portland for much longer. Please welcome Mohanad El Sheiki. <laughs> Savage. Oh. <laughs> What's up, Mahana? Yeah, free twenty-one. Hey, free twenty-one. Thank you for thank you for coming. Is, is your thank mic is your mic working? Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it yep. is working. Yeah, we're good. Uh, all right, you're from Libya. Yeah. Benghazi. Yeah. Which until I researched you this morning, yeah, I thought Benghazi was like a made-up word we used to hate Hillary Clinton. 
I wish it was. It's, uh, it's actually a city in Libya. It is. It is a city in Libya. It's where I lived. <laughs> uh, it sometimes <laughs> feel made up. Uh, yeah. Um, I want to. I want to start there because I like, like, like you're, you're like the immigration equivalent of like uh, I'm. St- I'm starstruck because I don't think I've ever known someone that uh, ha- had asylum. Yeah. Like oh, for all the talk we do about asylum. Yeah. And I, I want to talk so much about that, but oh, like, so, so yeah. like tracing it from. But first, let's. T- I just want to picture because here you're growing up in part of a gigantic blind spot for me. What, uh, t- t- childhood in Libya. You can be comedic, tragic, sad, whatever. I, uh, like, oh, I mean, I mean, honestly, uh, this is like a funny question he's asking because, like, a lot of people, like, when they uh, imagine my childhood in Libya, they always go to like a, some like a, a war zone. Some I totally. Kind of like, I've, I've, oh, absolutely. I, I'm yeah. afraid to tell you what I would picture, but you can imagine. Oh it. no, th- th- I'll tell you the picture. The picture is like me being a child soldier. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Just being like, I'm going to defend my mom, you know? But it's like those backgrounds where the road is the same color as the building. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you can't tell. Yeah. No, I mean, my childhood was, like, very chill. Like, I... uh, I, But what did the neighborhood look like? If it didn't look like that, like, what my fucking first world, like, xenophobic images, what does it look like... like uh, uh, the Munsters neighborhood? Does it look like the uh, Cleavers? I don't know what reference to draw. But. I honestly, like, I look around LA and there's like some houses that we had that looked like the same. Uh, I mean, the structure was like more like, uh, it was kind of different because it, like the houses were, we don't have like houses like built, I, I don't know how to describe it, like the material here that people use, it's more like cement, they're like kind of like very, like, this is how I would describe it. Like you know, like when 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 I was when when I was growing up, like when I see like someone gets angry on TV, they punch a wall and they get through it. In <laughs> Libya, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, you punch a wall, that's it. You're dead. So, yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. it's like it's like the cement block kind of uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So there that's, were a lot of <laughs> there were a lot of fist holes yeah, in my house growing up, and then there would be these dents where you found a stud. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why people like assume they were super angry because like even you can't even punch a wall there like so where uh, you start a war that's what you do. Uh, w- w- when did you leave Libya? I I left Libya in 2014, so I was 23 when I left. Okay. And yeah. You, and you came straight to uh, uh, LA or where? No, Portland. Portland. Yeah, sorry, Portland. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, initially I came like on an exchange program. It was supposed to be for six weeks. This is what yeah. this is this is like nightmare fuel for me. Yeah. I'm gonna use my I statements. I'm not gonna say for white people. This yeah. is nightmare nightmare fuel for me. Yeah. Um, you were a special kid, smart, bright. Yeah. You're like, I like I'm assuming so. I'm yeah. like identifying with you. Like you're 14, you're in Benghazi. You're like people are probably coming up to you and going like, Hey, you're funny. Like like uh, talk and talk and you become uh, <laughs> you you become an exchange student. While you're here, uh, here being America, yeah. uh, uh, you, uh, you are you getting texts or emails? This is the story leading to your quest for yeah. asylum. Oh yeah, Facebook messages from yeah from my from family, family and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying yeah. So I mean, like when I moved here, I was 23. Uh, I and the program was like six weeks. That's the whole program. That was it was important State University. And after the program was done, I was supposed to uh, to go back to Libya. That's that was the whole plan. Uh, like I didn't even pack enough for like staying a year or so. Uh, and then I was like getting like messages from my family and stuff. We we're like, hey, uh, so to give you some background, like back home when the when the war started, like re- the revolution, the Arab Spring, they started in 2011. Uh, like the countries were like we like the like Libyans took down the government. There was like no government anymore, uh, and it was like kind of like. Everything was like very mixed up, and was and I used to work as a as an interpreter. This is what I did, and I used to take like uh, mostly like journalists and stuff. I used to take them to the front lines. Uh, this is when you were a kid. I was yeah, I was twenty or so, and you had such a facility already. Yeah. Uh, like like, I don't want to derail us yeah, from yeah. this asylum <laughs> story, but yeah. also that's a different fascinating story. Like your biopic. I don't understand any polyglot. Like I don't understand how anybody like yeah. speaks multiple languages. But to be twenty, yeah. And how do you? Let's just go ahead and derail and talk about that job. How yeah. does that happen? Yeah. I mean, what? I mean, this was never a job. Like I was like, oh, this is what I want to <laughs> do because the war started out of nowhere, just like started like out of the sudden. It probably doesn't pay well, and it sounds like something that may. Uh, I <laughs> cause didn't trouble. get uh, paid a single dollar for it. But you sca- <laughs> But you scammed. And someone came to you. You did, right? right? Like, you like, skim a little bit. What's that? You skimmed. <laughs> skim is skim is like a finder's fee. 
Oh. You know, like people, you <laughs> you interpret for somebody, and then they go, they tip you, and then you're like, I'm supposed to share this with the other interpreters, I was, uh, but. I was dumb enough to be like, I'm doing this for my country, you know? And now I'm like, oh, I should have gotten money for this shit. But can you, so, like, like, like take me to the moment when, who, who, who is the harbinger of this gig? You yeah. are, you, like, like, the moment where you go from regular guy with no troubles to, some, to being a, an interpreter. Yeah, so I, I used to work in a school that thought English as a second language, so they approached that school. Second? Yeah. <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck the world. I'm sorry, I don't know. I, <laughs> dumb. Second, second to Arabic. Arabic is better, just say Fine, it, fine. It looks more beautiful. When in Rome, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, when in Libya. I don't, I don't, I don't. Uh, Ryan, Ryan oh, Funch has called me out on this habit I have of like, I cast too wide a net. Well, I, I ask somebody a meaningful question and then I fucking do it. <laughs> go, go, go See, ahead. the questions are great. I love them. It's, they're it's they're the, super good. It's, it's the interjections. It's, the, it's my constant you, fucking take great. of like, I, it's about me. Ah! You give me more time to think and I appreciate that. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so go, st- rewind no, so, and pretend. Yeah. To- no, so they approached that school, like, hey, like, uh, do you have people for us like, that like, would be interested in doing that? And uh, my manager approached me, and I was like, would you like to do that? Like, yeah, hell yeah, I have What a does car. manager mean, though? Because you're a kid. Well, I'm tw- like the person who owned that school uh, that I used well, to work I don't, at. I, that, that doesn't, uh, your school had a manager? No, 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 it wasn't my school. It, I, when I was 20, I, u- I was teaching English. Oh yeah, I was I was an employee at that place. So, so you uh, you, sp- you speak Arabic, you learned English fluently. At what yeah. age? Yeah, uh, like seven. And and what else? You speak like French or uh, two? No, two English and Arabic. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you yeah. became a teacher teaching English as a second language. Yeah. And so your your boss, like the vice principal of the school. Yeah, it was like it was I demoted like, him. Yeah, I was like, hey, w- would you like to do that? And they were like, and I was like, yeah, hell yeah, I have a who car. Are th- yeah. Who are these guys that are out front? Like, like oh. your, your your boss is coming with the clip on tie. <laughs> He's like, yeah. hey, Mahadid, uh you got a real handle on that English, huh? Keep yeah. teaching it. Are they are they asking you to work for like the embassy or for like like? That was before the embassy. Uh, that that was just like, hey, we have these like journalists who are coming here to cover the revolution, and they were like everyone. Like it was like from CNN, CNBC, like whatever it was. Oh. And okay. they were like, we need someone to take them to like do like some interpretation, like the front lines. So it and sounds stuff. actually not even. It sounds like like you said, yeah. do this for my country. Exactly. There are yeah. journalists coming. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I would love to help because like at the time there was like a week when the revolution started, like where there was like no news coverage happening at all, and no one outside of Libya kn- knew what How happened. How can more awareness be a bad thing? Ex- <laughs> exactly. So when these people came, we're like, oh, I'm excited. Like, to, I, like, I want everyone outside to know what's happening, and I want them to like, capture that like, correctly. Uh, because like, they were, like, were going around the city asking people, and people like, were not speaking English that well, so they take whatever they assume that they say and just put that on like the You must have felt like Indiana Jones, like you're finishing writing a <laughs> hot dog uh, on the blackboard. Exactly, There's yeah. a girl blinking, I love you. It's written, I love you, is on her eyelids. And then your boss goes like, some government guys, some CNN guys <laughs> want to yeah. take you and like, and, and you're like, God damn it, this is such a romantic, adventurous job. Exactly, yeah. I was like so excited at the time. Like, oh, I'll take them to the front lines. That sounds exciting. Uh, <laughs> and I did that when, like, we, we like we driven for a while, and we got in there, and there was like a like an area where they're like, you can't go across this line because this is where like the actual like uh, fighting is happening, and journalists are like, let's go across the line. I'm right. like, yeah, let's do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I take them, and I mean, there were some moments where it was just like sometimes it's just like, oh, it's easy job. Like they're asking soldiers, and they're like, and then uh, there's uh, like other other times where like. Everyone starts running, and you have no idea what's what you're running away from, and you just keep going until like you just like hide behind like a car <laughs> or something. I'm like, I don't know what's happening. Uh, yeah. At that time, were you like, there's good guys and there's bad guys, and I'm just like, I'm, yeah, yeah. At the time, there were like good guys and bad guys. We knew who the bad guy wa- uh, was, but then a year after that, it was just like bad guys everywhere and i'm like maybe i'm a bad guy now you like you never know what was happening it was so, just so, so who's in charge at this point is it magariev or what's his name how do you say that name like who's the uh the vi- like the former president yeah you mean? yeah that was gaddafi oh so this is during gaddafi yeah during like what well, yeah during gaddafi it was like the revolution against him and then he died like t- t- 10 months after so hmm. it was just like the it was like so yeah. how, how are you seen by the locals are you seen as a conspirator like with the west or 
That started to happen after like uh, like few years in because I uh, I was still doing that job and then that school I was working on it, there was programs that were sponsored by the U.S. Embassy in Benghazi and we had the uh, we had the uh, ambassador like uh, 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 Christopher Stevens who used to come here, uh, there all the time so like the, we we were seen as people who worked with the embassy and like I'm right. like a person who did that too. So gotta kinda like put the spotlight on me. Also I used to like Is it because of the bag of forgive my ignorance, don't know anything about that conflict or what the result was. Is it is the situation that then after you went to be a foreign exchange student that the bad guys that, that the guys you perceived as bad, let's call it like oh, that, that it became worse after I came here. They yeah. they did they take power? They did take power, yes. And so they, you're they, you're over here learning yeah. about quantum physics or whatever, Noam Chomsky. Yeah, I was I was learning about <laughs> conflict resolution. <laughs> yeah. And you're getting yeah. okay, so now ta that takes us to this moment where you're getting Facebook messages from loved ones. Yeah. Which I can't put myself in this situation. No, I was I was getting text messages from my mom and stuff, and she's like, Hey, like uh yeah, someone came by the house today and they were asking for you and they like came through your room and like took some of your stuff and whatever. And I was like, they took my stuff. Like, I was like, what did they take? By the way, I should yeah. interject here for a second because it's like I I take this for granted. This guy is incredibly funny. He's a great comedian who is like the like, and that's but even if even if you were a fireman, this would be an interesting story. Yeah. But like, what's crazy about this is that you still at this stage of this story, you haven't yet thought about a career in comedy. No. And that yeah. like as of a couple years ago, you're like legitimately like. P P Portland's like you know people yeah. are excited about you and yeah. you're like like because you're that good at stand up yeah but I'm, like I'm you really weren't good. <laughs> you won't say it but that's what's like double ironic about it is we have so much to talk about about comedy theory and stuff but yeah. first we have to get through this thing of no, like, it, I haven't met somebody who's been in this situation no absolutely I mean that definitely makes sense yeah. Uh, uh, so, so, so they went through your house. They went through your room. Yeah. And what were they like? Like looking for your computer or? They well, my computer was with me at the time, but like they were looking through my like they were trying to find stuff that would like tie me to the embassy because that happened after the embassy attack and all of that. And uh, also, the thing is like as a Libyan citizen, when you want to come to the U.S. at the time, it was like a very very long process. Uh, because I was accepted in that program, I got my visa in like two days or so. It was like very like a quick thing because they've already done background check and all of that. So they were like, okay, so this guy who we thought worked with the U.S. before went so easily to the U.S. There's no way he's not working for the U.S. That's government. ironic. So they, they, yeah. they thought you were like special services or like... Yep, like, that's exactly <laughs> what they thought. That is incredibly <laughs> ironic. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they thought you were intelligence? Like they... Or like... Like 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 Secret Service stuff. Ex yeah, exactly. I was like well, such a compliment, but also at the time, <laughs> <laughs> this guy's James Bond. That. Like, wow, that's uh, amazing. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so you're getting these. I want to interject here though emotionally and go like, I because I feel this anxiety even as a person who doesn't even like. I don't know. I don't know what your emotional connection is to your family, but you're getting you're getting messages from back home that is saying like they're tossing your room. Yeah. Literally tossing your room, your bedroom. What, 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 like, like uh, they're looking for r reasons to justify yeah. making you an enemy of the state while you're sitting over here on a temporary lily pad yeah. that is our government's like job to like either uh, you know renew like a library book or whatever. Uh, now, but what 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 about your family? Like, are yeah. they in danger I I at that point? At that point, yeah. If I mean, they're tossing they, your room, then they're they, I mean, shaking your grandma, right? No, absolutely. They eventually had to leave the city. Like, they left the house, they left the city, they moved to another city because they were like, we can't deal with the shit anymore. So there's like a, yeah. a city that's more. Yeah, they wanted the capital, which is Tripoli. They moved because there. Because you're yeah. because you're an intelligent interpreter. Because that he had has yeah. connections in America. Exactly. Yeah, they were like, well, yeah, we're uh, we have more and, family and in that, that city. Is, is that because of the uh, the change of power in in Libya, like like the, like the like after Gaddafi died? Or? Yes. Yeah, because there were like a lot of like uh, like religious extremism. Like it becomes I, sort of a free for all, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because there was so many. There was like the Libyan military, and then you have like uh, groups that like were like affiliated you had with Wolf ISIS. Wolf Blitzer stink so. on you. <laughs> exactly. Wolf Blitzer touched you as a baby bird. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then after the uh, MC attack happened and everything, it became even worse there because like these people like oh. 
because like the embassy attack was like a statement as if like we're in power. This is like we can do whatever the fuck we want. So these people were like more and more like in 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 power. And uh, and then yeah, after like I, I came here and like getting all of these messages and stuff, I did I feel terrified? Did I feel bad? Not really, because uh, I've had like worse stuff happen when I was there. So I was like, I was like, I, it was like a mental state where I was like, in like, no matter what happens, I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, I guess there's something that we have to deal with. What's the worst stuff? <laughs> <laughs> the worst stuff is just like, uh, I've been shot at in my car twice before. Uh, the radio station I used to work for, because I, I used to host a radio show, like was burned down to the ground because they were like uh, not into what we were saying or stuff. Uh, Why so would you be shot at in your car? Was what's it, that? Were, were you being targeted? Yeah, I was getting a lot of death threats even when I was uh, when I was being Gazi at they, the how time. How did people know you? They, they, they had seen you walking around with. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, like, pe- like people get like. You, you were a voice of opposition, or or, or or were you even at all? Like, it wasn't an opposition. It was more of like, okay, so uh, we have no government now. What's gonna be like the face of the new country? And most of the opinions that me and my uh, co-host had were too Western, as they described them. And when I say Western, it, they were just like. Uh, yeah, we want to like separate religion from government. Like we don't, we want this and we want right, that. We should, we, yeah. should, we should try that here. Um, <laughs> I keep having this like crazy, like I, this high pitched tone in my ear where I'm like, like your family's safe now. Yeah. In quotes. Yeah. Like, like, they're, like they're just safe because yeah. just so we can continue to talk about this story. No, they're safe. Which is, they're which good. is focused on you. It's like, 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 I just keep thinking <laughs> of this family. They're like Facebooking you and going yeah. like, yeah, they tossed your room. And like, okay, so they relocated to, and they're safe because the, the story of you then, cause I'm a narcissist. So all I do is put myself in your shoes and yeah. think about what if it was me. And then I just want to puke until I die. Uh, like going like what everyone hate like 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 they're they're trying so you apply for asylum yeah in 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 the United States and and as the policy is they go okay we'll look into that and how describe that process yeah so when you when you apply for an asylum it's a very very lengthy process it's uh, you have to apply, like once you apply it's it's First, it's very expensive to do so. Cause really? Like, yeah, if you want to... Because like, if you even like mark like one uh, like wrong box or something like that, that can affect the whole process. So they like you have to hire a lawyer. So like that's like three grand or something just to hire a lawyer just to fill your papers and stuff. And like you're a, in a, like a person who's like new to this place. I'm like, okay, I, I'm just going to like toss like three grand to them. And then every time they're like asking for more papers and everything costs money and you have to pay fees and stuff. So you keep so going, there is going. Likely, is it, do you, uh, I'm totally ignorant of this. Is there a channel of like, you is asylum a legitimate channel for people of means because they can just afford it the way like maybe Harrison Ford doesn't have to stand in line at the DMV with me, like 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 that you can is there or, I mean, or are there, rich people just they don't need no, asylum they just there, yeah there's no way to kind of like cut into cause rich people like always like they start a business and get a green card this is how they do it but like I and I wasn't like a person who couldn't afford it but I was like kind of like in the middle so asylum I can afford is the like, lawyer okay yeah right. I was like afforded to do it. The right way and not make mistakes, and that's it. All right. Uh, so, so, so you're talking. I mean, when you talk about these steps where you're going through, where I'm like, oh my god, my heart is skipping beats. Yeah. Every time you, every time you go through one of these cycles, there's countless thousands of people who who had to give up at that point because oh, ex- they had to find a lawyer. Absolutely. People, yeah, people have like uh, one one reason people give up, and that makes sense to me, is that. The first eight months after you apply for an asylum, you're not allowed to work. You can't have a legal job. So you just have to find ways to make money. That's such a funny thing to me. Yeah. Like well, funny in the in air quotes. I like the yeah. idea of like, oh, wait, what, someone's going to kill you? I don't believe you. Exactly. I think you're here to sell peanuts. <laughs> exactly. If I, if I catch you selling a single peanut instead of fearing for your life, <laughs> so, so you, you you have to have connections uh, and, and someone like you have some have to have uh, some lifeline to take care of you. Absolutely, yeah. So Absolutely. it's like yeah, it's like being a PA in Hollywood. It's like a, a <laughs> s- simultaneous oppression and and privilege where it's like you can't even qualify to be mistreated unless your parents are rich. So who was exactly. taking care of you? Your family from back home or? Oh, what? it was like I had to like transfer all of the money I had back home to uh, to the US and like kind of like start spending that money. And then I had to get like like under the table jobs and stuff like work for a food cart or like do this uh, and that. So, so to, to prove to our government that you're not here to like fuck around, like, 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 like you're actually here and you can 
survive without a job. I see. But you're not allowed to work. Yeah. Or, well, or, or you're proving that you're here to steal a job. This is this is this is the reason I believe they're doing that. It's it's mostly to be like, if you're serious about being here, you'll yeah. find ways because this is the American dream, it's a struggle Fuck or that. whatever. That's fucking uh, terrible. because you know how everyone is born here have to do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We just lied about our cotton expertise, and we got free rides. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you paid God no rent. It. You paid no, no rent. rent. You yeah. had jobs. Yeah, you had got free jobs. meals. Yeah. You I should mean, try it. You know anything about tobacco? <laughs> <laughs> 110 degree weather. Happy February. Happy February. I'm so excited. I'm doing black history for my workout. I'm, I'm learning about so many uh, black and, histories. And uh, after 300 years, you got your visa. That's right. Uh, yeah. That's there right. you go. Oh my God! And then, and then in 1920, years. women got theirs. Uh, isn't that great? Um, but I, yeah, I don't want to get too political or anything. But uh, yeah. it almost sounds like what you're describing doesn't define the word asylum. No, <laughs> it sounds yeah. it, like the idea, doesn't. the original idea behind that word is like if no. I could, it's almost like a believe the victim thing. Yeah, like I, I, I don't I, like I, I, maybe maybe I'll book somebody that like works in some office. It's not going to be an ICE agent. It's not going to be. I, 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 maybe there's someone on the other side of the issue that can tell me. Oh God, if we open those floodgates, but I just have this weird sneaking suspicion that. There is absolutely not a zero sum game going on here where if everyone who came to your borders and said, I'm going to die, I'm scared I'm going to die, or I'm yeah. already in your country and I'm scared to go back home, if we said to all of those people, okay, well, all right, here you go, rubber stamp, that that what would happen would be the destruction of America. I just choose to not believe that. But See, yeah, see, the thing is, like, the thing is, like, uh, if they if they put more means and like more money into the process of making that a fast process, that will help. Like, oh, because like they do a lot of like uh, like background check and stuff. But in my case, for example, like, so you're worried about me me maybe being not like a good person. I'm gonna do this in this country. Blah blah blah. You make like me... I hate for you to just shack up in a trailer and make like yeah. eight kids and eat seven of them. So, <laughs> <laughs> although as a listener of true crime, I'd have to yeah. say. <laughs> Absolutely, you're yeah. as welcome to do that as anybody. <laughs> True equality. Uh, <laughs> like, like yeah. statistics bear out. But it's just so crazy to me because I'm like, they're like, okay, so uh, you can apply for an asylum, eight months, no job, so maybe you can do it illegally. We don't know. Do you do your thing, and then you get a work permit, and then wait for four years to have an interview, so we can decide based on the story that you tell us. If you're uh, if you're being honest or not. Now, in those four years I'm here, I could have plotted so many things against the U.S. <laughs> yeah. If uh, you yeah. think I'm a how, dangerous how, person, how, how many did you? Uh, <laughs> I started a career in stand-up comedy, so that's one thing. That is a bit of a plot against the U.S. I mean, yeah. you are bumping a lot of Jay Moore's uh, out there, like that. You're going to destabilize the comedic industry. Yeah, exactly. Um, did it, people it, actually look? That's the question. Is in that four years, are Americans actually looking? in your home country to see if anything's ever gone down? Do they really spend that time well? After, after, I, did my, uh, after I did my interview with the immigration officer, I realized they know nothing. And they were like, you tell us everything from the beginning. It was three hours and a half of just interview questions and them being like, so Libya, okay, tell us more about that. I'm like, what have you been doing for the past uh, yeah. four well, years? Well, that's a little bit of relief to me as yeah. an interviewer. I'm like, I, I'm like, you know, Libya, you bombed that place. <laughs> uh, like, what? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so, so, so Bombing doesn't mean knowing about. <laughs> nope. So, so <laughs> I'm a child of the 80s. <laughs> if, if you're... <laughs> I, 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 my parents paid for the bombing. I bet they can't point to it on a map. <laughs> now, now you had you had a run in recently in Spokane, Washington. I, I, are you sick of talking about this? Or no, we can we can talk about it. Well, I yeah. do want to segue, but yeah. it's, it's a natural segue. But it's like, like like that's the thing is that it's almost a shame. It's like uh, oh, this all this like stuff, this struggle and stuff. But it's also like if it were a if it were a strictly comedy podcast and we were like, hey, who's this new uprising comedy star? Yeah. It's like, you're very funny. And and it, and, it, and it's it's incredibly interesting, the idea that you were this funny given how recently, according to my hour of research of you on Wikipedia, like, <laughs> and I, I said to you in the green room, is that like a, is that an exaggeration? Or did like, it was like four years ago, somebody said to you, in the height of this like pressure where you're like, 
I was here in asylum. I was an interpreter, and now I'm like here studying this and that. And yeah. then it's like, oh shit, ticking clock. I may have to go back. I don't know when. And yeah. someone said to you, uh, you should try comedy. Yeah, yeah. It, it was in college because I was I was taking a I was taking a public speaking class at the time. And then at the end of the term, my public speaking professor was like, it was like, it was like, have you tried comedy? And I was like. I was like, nah, I haven't. I was like, yeah, I know some open mics can show you where to go. And so I was like, yeah, well, let's let's do this. And then I did. And I was like, oh, this is a good profession. Yeah, I can yell at people on a mic. <laughs> that sounds cool. This yeah. is a point where if we could play a clip, if we were a good, po- if we were a, a TV show in the '90s or something, we play a clip yeah. of you, like like so that people could rest assured, like yeah. you're you're very graceful and funny on stage. You do these things that honestly, like I was, I was telling you in the green room, like I watched your one set and I was like, I wanted to dig in with you about the minutia of what you're doing on stage because I, I tried to do stand up from 17 to God knows when I yeah. really hung it up. But like, it is an art that it, it, it like, like, and here you are English as a second language and you're on stage and you there's really specific things that you do like where you let the audience not do anything yeah you're you're doing a stand up set in Portland and you have this bit that's like where where it's just like it's very resonant cuz you're like the tee up is just you talking about like gun rights and that you the setup is that you t- I so I tweeted like oh I don't think that gun rights this and that I can't remember the setup at all yeah, yeah yeah but it's it's provocative enough that I would never trust an audience to not fuck everything up by yeah. reacting either positively with applause or booing or harumphing and you just let it sit so patiently. Yeah. And then it makes your punchline so funny because it, all it is is like the joke is like you go, you tweet this thing and it's like uh, uh, a, gu- a gun control thing. It's yeah. like, it's just basically like, I don't think guns should be this or that or whatever. What's the, it, what's the joke? Yeah, let's hear this. Well, uh, well uh, if you don't feel. No, no, I, I, yeah, I can. I, I... You gotta break the. You are professional. <laughs> no, I can, I can do it. I'm, 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 I'm good. I mean, I'm I know good. when people tell uh, when people tell me to do my Sean Connery impression, I'm like, no, I can't do it because you asked. Well, let's, I, let's, I don't let's, do it. Let's, too. let's hear yeah. Sean Connery. Most impression. things down here don't react well to bullets. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, whatever. But it's like, if you, if you, no, if, you if you, if you work well under pressure, no, I'll, I'll tell you the joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we uh, <laughs> we live in a, such a weird time because a lot of people have uh, uh, opinions. <laughs> you know, and uh, have you seen those? <laughs> yeah, they're there. And uh, especially about stuff like guns, for example, because uh, a lot of people have opinions about that, and mostly everyone is wrong. Uh, <laughs> and I, as a comedian, like every time a shooting happens or something, I have to go on social media and I have to like tweet something clever, you know, <laughs> to like raise awareness that I exist. Uh, <laughs> And last time a shooting happened, I just went and I tweeted and I wrote that we shouldn't be sending thoughts and prayers and we should be praying for more gun control. Which to me sounded like a very logical statement to post on the internet with the name Mohanid. Uh, (laughs) And I believed in everything I said until that guy Kevin replied to me. You guys know Kevin? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, from social media. <laughs> yeah, he, he's there too. Uh, and Kevin replied to me, this is what Kevin said, and I quote, You fucking Muslim, I eat bacon 24-7. <laughs> Which is quite impressive. Uh, <laughs> I was like, man, I don't eat bacon, but I think that's super unhealthy. Uh, <laughs> Also, probably the worst argument against gun control. <laughs> Just shouting your favorite food at me. Yeah, Kevin is dead now. Uh, yeah, it's that pause. Yeah, that's the thing that I focus on. Is the uh, thank you. It's the pause where you describe your tweet because I live in this cynical world where. Whatever I think of Portland, I don't even know. I was like, I'm watching from Los Angeles. I'm watching the YouTube clip of you in front of 100 people in Portland. Yeah. And I don't know what's going through your head when you're willing to go. So I tweeted uh, thoughts and prayers and, yeah, yeah. And, and a wall. I've become so jaded, so yeah. cynical that I'm like, I would never, ever, I gotta, I, ca- I gotta, I can't, I can't let this rest happen because someone will 
fuck it up. Can you talk yeah. about that? Like, what your did you vet that silence? I mean, no. I, I mean, like the silence exists there for a reason because, like, yes, uh, like some of the jokes I do, like people would do that. Like someone would jump in or like uh, or like woos or something or just say something stupid and just ruin the whole thing. Uh, but I've done it like few times to see like like that silence makes it like even better and. I think I think it's mostly because of the way I say it, because I talk like very slowly and stuff, and like people like I give people the impression like there's something else coming out, so like <laughs> uh, people are, like on the edge to see like what's gonna come next, so no one want like interrupt the silence. And I think I think it's yeah I think like the setup if someone else says it like it would be like more like yeah or like, ah. right. uh, but like when I say that like. I don't know where this is going, but I want to hear it. <laughs> uh, I think that's got to be like, yeah. that's so Portland. Yeah. I, I'm assuming is it's it, like... Is there a place uh, in, in the States that you can do um, comedy in Arabic? No, I would never do comedy in Arabic. I don't know. A- have how you to ever do tried it? Arabic. Yeah, I like I can tell stories in Arabic, but like the structure of like a setup punchline is like such a like foreign concept to Arabic language that if you did it, like people like... Uh, why are you quiet? Like, why did you stop? <laughs> why did you like, pause? Yeah, oh, uh, for real. Like, I never thought of that. So, like, like, th- th- is there any stand-up culture in in Arabic? Like, in any in Arabic? There is in some countries. Yeah, like if you go like countries like Lebanon, like if you go to Dubai, if you go to like it's more getting like more recognized and stuff. But everything I've seen is like was like more storytelling, and I think it has to do with the, the Arabic language. It's like more like like you like you have to keep going. You have to keep going. Like and just like it has to be like. Long stories and like. So you can't just do like set up punchline like 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 pauses like like. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like traditional American style. Exactly. Stand yeah. up set up punchline stuff. Absolutely, because like it, this is a way that I've learned how to talk in English that way when I do when I did it here because like when I speak in Arabic I never talk this way like I'm like I talk way faster. And like, like when you, I, when, you, when you speak when Arabic. I when I speak Arabic, like even when I'm telling a funny story in Arabic, it's always like full of like energy and more like talking like way faster. While in English, is I'm it like, politically incorrect to go like let's just uh, even though we won't understand it, I just want to hear you sp- tell a story really fast in Arabic, just so we can. Is, I, is, 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 or is that, or is that like a weird? Is like, there a funny bar joke like like a, like a straight up joke joke like an Arabic classic like like t- like a guy goes into a bar and the bartender says whatever. Like well, it, it, we don't have bars. <laughs> yeah, it's already funny. Yeah, I know, like, 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 like a, like a proper, just straight up, like. I'm trying to think because if it was like a story I would like remember that would just like say it out loud. But if you, I don't know, maybe you can give me a few sentences I can say them in Arabic. That would be okay. Uh, give me a joke. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, a guy uh, goes into a doctor's office, and the doctor says. Uh, Oh, a, a guy oh goes, we'll be an interpreter, on, and he'll be <laughs> and pre- pretend I'm Arabic, even though I can't understand it. Yeah, let, and and translate his. Isn't well, be, that what you got to do? Because I have to go the same speed as he. You want to okay, no, no. So, right, so, yeah. okay, so a, a guy is getting his annual physical, and the doctor looks at his chart and says, "Sir, I'm afraid you're going to have to stop masturbating." And the guy says, "Why?" And the guy, the doctor says, "Because I'm trying to give you a physical." So, what so, is so, so, uh, what is Ted Koppel saying to me? I'm <laughs> I don't understand. So, so, tell that joke in Arabic. الراجل يمشي الدكتور يقول له ما شك أصلاً شك ما ينفعش أنا بدي لك لأن في نيرو في في عملية تو نحن. Oh oh. Wait no I no but for real wait you were done. Yeah, I was. Oh, like, I, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very no. quick. Yeah, that was. I was. I. Uh, yeah, that, so, so you said that, that joke. Is that, is that a notable thing that like the <laughs> there wasn't like a big fucking. Yeah, you just like, go this fast at the end, and, and like people can just follow with you. Like, is that oh, is that yeah. is, is that a ling- is that an now, Mahana, culture Ma- thing that you would just Mahana, like? You would, do you know the difference be- between uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, okay. Oh, that's a joke. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there are two different <laughs> cities. Let him yeah. tell you it's worth it. Oh, yeah. Tell me the joke, though. Uh, People from... uh, I'm surprised you don't know this. Uh, People from Dubai do not like the Flintstones, but people from Abu Dhabi do! Uh Feels good. No, tell that in Arabic. (laughs) Don't. 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 (laughs) Let me be the uh, angel on your shoulder. Uh, I do want to ask, though, because I'm fascinated with... It's a fucking good joke. It's a good joke. <laughs> you know what? Don't be defiant about it. <laughs> it might be or it might not be. Yeah. I, I hated it's, that joke so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it's. Well, because you're totally from Dubai. It's I, arguably, I, but but I, I the 
I, 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 uh, polyglots, I'm always like, they make me feel ashamed. And, He's still like, laughing at my joke, by the way. Wonder about things He's like, still, the, the joke is still washing over him. He still loves it. I always want to know do, the, <laughs> this idea of like, when do you think in one language and translate it to another in your head? You said something in the green room that yeah. was like, I think I've heard it before from other people that are bilingual. There, you said there was a transition. But tell me, tell me. Yeah, what. no. Uh, yeah, for the first few years here, I would like, like, I would speak in English, but I would like talk in Arabic, and I always had like that transition where I'm like, like when you tell me something, it just like goes into that fast process of like from like English to Arabic, and then like Arabic to English. Uh, now I'm at the point like where I even have my dreams in English. Like I would be like I'm fully gentrified now. So it changes, yeah. which I'd never. That, that's I, the, that's I, the thing. Like when you when you when you learn a language and they say when you start dreaming in the in the other language, that means you your brain has like completely. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And and now it's it's very strange because like when I talk to my parents and obviously like we talk in Arabic, like sometimes like I have I find myself being like, uh, what what's what's that word? And they're like, who are you? Uh. Like. Yeah. Do you think what you are you like, uh, is that uncomfortable to talk about? It's, it's like, tell me, stop at any time. But like, what is that relationship like? You are, after all, an astronaut that like came over. The asylum thing happened. You haven't yeah. been back since, right? Yeah, I haven't been so back in five years. Emotionally, yeah. is there any? Does that generate any conflict? It it it's. I mean, it's it's definitely hard. But like, honestly, like, uh, and like, I do miss them a lot and everything. And it's very hard on them too because it's just like. Uh, because that's this, because like in, in in like Libyan culture and stuff like that, like you you live as a family, like together, like you don't leave the house until like you get married. There's no like, oh, he's going to college now you leave. Like everyone lives together, like in a big house. So like there's all this, this family structure. So were you kind of a, sorry to rewind to your childhood yeah. then? So were you like? Were you a freak? Were you? Were they like? <laughs> were they like? What's up with Muhammad? He's like. He's like so weirdly verbal, or it, 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 it like just in comparison to that. Where was yeah. it like? Was there a departure in your childhood? Where mm -hmm. was there a point where uh, where there was this conversation about? Uh, well, you're gonna go to. You're gonna keep talking because you're a talker. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean. I mean. I mean, like my my parents, like would like uh, their thing with me is like they 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 would always be like, hey, do whatever you want. You can talk about whatever, but like, can you like tone it down a bit? <laughs> yeah, so resonant because they like sometimes like my mom like would like I would be outside of the house and I post something <laughs> on Facebook and she immediately calls me I'm like delete this right now. <laughs> did, did, yeah, and I'm did like, they speak uh, English too, or or, or just you? What's that? Do, do, does your family speak English as well? Uh, my my siblings do. None of my parents do. They like kind of understand it, but they they they've right. never like learned English. So like by they made sure that me and my siblings like were like learning English since we were like super young. But uh, them like they don't really speak it that are, well. Are you allowed to go back home right now? Are you? Are you... No, uh, because that's part of the whole uh, asylum process and getting the green card. I cannot go back until I become a citizen in a few years. Uh, because the your whole case is built on the fact that oh it's too dangerous for me to go back. Right. So if you go back, you're kind of like oh have you been lying this whole time on your uh, on your asylum status? So you wow. can't do that. Yeah. If, even if it gets better, they're like you have to become so a all citizen. So all the all the people coming from Venezuela and Central America that are coming in and seeking asylum, the same thing for them too. Absolutely. But yeah. they don't have the resource for l l lawyers and, and they do not. No, they do not. And obviously, like the the immigration, like they were like, yeah, we'll give you a lawyer, and that lawyer is like handling a hundred case. So there's so many like, and like even with a lawyer, even with everything, like the process is very vague yeah because like they're like uh because when i when i uh, when i applied they're like okay so when i do when when do i do my interview and they were like a ah, few months a year two years and then it was four so there was like no like you're just like living in a limbo like okay do i start my life do i and they're like well you just have to wait i don't know so so how, how close are you to the finish line of this where you actually get citizenship well i i find like i finished like i did the biggest step was getting your asylum approved, which I did uh, in last October, which was which was great because it was such a relief because I was like I'm like doing comedy and doing all of that, but not knowing if I'm like because if they decline it, it was just like it's it's like okay, well you either have to pay more money and hire a lawyer again and do all of that, or you you're welcome to leave. Uh, so there was that. So when it got it got approved, I was like okay, so 
okay, that's this is good. So but you're, there, there you're, was you're, a, you're good to go now. Well, now, yeah, and next October I get my green card, which is great, so I can come and go out, like, and travel mm-hmm. and like do all of that. And then uh, in three years from now, I, I do become a citizen. But to make it, 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 no mistake about it, and sorry if this is like yeah. insensitive or whatever, but this is just me going like, what my, I, I just, I'm putting myself in the, in these shoes and I'm going like, so there are points in your life and I don't know how long they are and I don't know how extreme the walls of, of, of it are, but like you have to legitimately fear the idea that you're going to get a letter, whether it's a pink stationery or a knock on the door, or it's a, some bureaucratic thing that's going to go, you get it. Now it didn't work. You're going back and yeah. you're going to be like, on an airplane and you're on the airplane and not only are you miserable because all airline travel is garbage, even if you're first class. True. All right, th- these people hate me and they love flaunting it with their sarcastic applause. Um, but you're like, like, like legitimately, like, cause I, I mean, like, I, like the, you just this, like you have to, you have to atone yeah. with a, with a, with a, a death in your head that, that, that someone would go, that you would you would be sent back, and that and that yeah. and that you would get to an airport, which everyone that's traveled knows you're not in control of your life because that's their airports. Absolutely, you yeah. can't just like jump off a plane like Arnold Schwarzenegger and be like, "I'm gonna run through the swamp." And, <laughs> and like like there's no you come through a gate; it's all controlled, and yeah. anyone that wants to once you're in that country. So do, how? Okay, please, like I, I unless you're uncomfortable talking no, about it's it, okay, like yeah. how high was that? Fear or is that fear of like the the of, of going back to a place where people will put a black bag over your head or am I being ignorant or like mm, that's <laughs> no that's sadly uh, was the case too yeah like oh, you like yeah like if I go back I'll probably how get, get long killed. did you live in fear of that happening and a, how much do you currently fear that happening? now not as much now and not because like I like I have my asylum approved and stuff so it's like illegal to even like be like oh you get deported unless you like unless you could like commit like a like a criminal like something like huge like criminal offense or something then you're like you're you're safe uh, but like yeah, even like the past few years, the there was a fear like I would say from 2014 to 2016. <laughs> so there was always you know where I'm going. Weird dates, uh, random dates. I don't yeah, know why. You know where I'm going with that. And it was like 2006, and then to, until 2000, like okay, I'm still like good. And then uh, there was a change uh, and uh, yeah, in know the what office, you're about, yeah. yeah. And then it became like it went like from. 40 to to 100. But well, I'm sure you're that I'm sure that's a figment of your imagination because I have I'm absolutely positive that you have no real world evidence that anything actually changed from day to day. After all, true. you were already in America for all those years and then that election happened and you're a smart guy and you're walking around with your papers <laughs> and you're super funny and you're Portland's finest and you're just <laughs> strutting your thing and you got your asylum and nothing can happen to that's, you. That's right? my show. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, a happy I mean, ending. It, yeah. So, yeah. Can, can, can we take it to Spokane now? Like, <laughs> yeah. Let's let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't know. Does anybody know the story about what happened to him? It's it's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll, I'll tell you the story. Uh, most of these people are like, what the fuck is Spokane? Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a trash place. Like it's really it bad. Is. By you the way, do you want there. a drink? I, I didn't. No, I'm she good. don't lie. I'm she good. don't yeah. lie. She yeah. don't lie. <laughs> Spokane. <laughs> oh, there's a song too. Okay. okay. When you're bored of shit, <laughs> <laughs> uh, drown in your own spit. Spokane. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. So, yeah, as you said, yeah, I got my asylum approved, and then I was like, oh, everything is perfect right now. Like, no, <laughs> like this guy is untouchable. Like, you talk to me, like, here are my papers. It's like getting 70 episodes uh, on your show. You're like, Dan, m- stop making it about you. 4chan can't stop me now. <laughs> well, right. yeah, I can. Yeah, wait, uh, tap yeah. that hornet's nest again. Yeah, very relatable. I'm like, yeah, 70 episodes. Yeah, tell me more. Yeah, hey, man. I've never had an episode. <laughs> That's my one talent. I've been putting on earth to make everything about me. Uh, no, no. You're, you're, uh, you're, go ahead. So, yeah. No, uh, <laughs> uh, no I, uh, 
Yeah, no, I, I recently got like a, a college gig in, 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 it was in Pullman, Washington, which is like Spokane, what is that, you know? Uh, like no one knows what that is, just a very small college town. And they're like, hey, if you want to come perform? We have like, a, we have like an event. And I was like, yeah, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come and do it. So uh, I took the bus to get there. Because uh, it's like, by bus, it was like five to six hours or so. Because it was like snowy, like I'm not going to drive. Uh, I got there, I did my set on Saturday. Uh, it went really well. All right. Yeah. Don't, don't look it up. Yeah. It it went it went great. It was amazing. He's a good comic, yeah. and also all college crowds are a gimme. Yeah. It was really bad. Uh, <laughs> it was. Ugh. You too, really? You're, oh you're, my god. It was. It was like. It wait, was. Wait, yeah. Did, did you bomb, or did the audience just not dig it? The the. It was like so the crowd like was like mostly students, and then I discovered that most of them were like promised extra credit if they attend. Uh, so I was talking to a crowd of people who were looking at their phones and not even looking at me. Yeah. And I did ten minutes of material like to like just <laughs> no one, and they were like a full, like it was like a full room too. And then I sat on stage, and then she started interviewing people like, "Where are you from?" Ah, that's trash. It's like an old man, you know. Uh, and they just like start yelling at people and stuff, and they laughed a bit at that. Uh, and then yeah, so I did my set, got paid everything. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna leave this town, and never gonna coming back. Uh, you got, get back on that safe ass bus. Uh, yeah, I got on the bus. Then I, we had we had to do a bus transfer in Spokane, so that was the reason I was there. I had to wait for three hours. Then I get I get on the bus. The bus is here on time, which is great. I get on the bus just sitting in the back looking at my phone and stuff and then these two people in uniform like come in and they like just like start walking around and then like But the bus stops so you back that up though. The What's bus that? the bus stops somewhere specific before it's, these guys was, get on. No, it was at the Greyhound station. So okay. we haven't left yet. He's transferred uh, in Spokane. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yes. and it's like I I've never traveled by bus. The, yeah. uh, uh, God Must be forbid. Nice. Yeah. Uh the the uh There's still time. The 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 <laughs> <laughs> is it it's like it's it's like if you're going an eight hour trip do you tend to just sit there and it stops at greyhound stations yeah so you, you wait you, you sit in the shitty station and you, you you're but you don't get off the bus if you're just taking the whole trip no so see no it was it was so first bus from pullman to spokane and then left that bus because that bus doesn't go all the way to okay, pullman. okay. it only goes to spokane and then Waited in the station for three hours, and then the other bus came that was going to uh, to Portland. Okay. So yeah, just like I I don't know flights like how like it was like a transit kind of thing. I just want to contextualize like these guys getting on the bus. Are they getting on the bus before a trip starts? Before they... the trip started. Okay. Yes. Yes. So everyone sat. Yeah, everyone sat. And we then were these just, guys get on. Yeah, they got on, and then they were like looking at like they were like pointing at random people, and they, and I I can like vaguely hear what they were saying, and then. They came to me and I was like, oh, they're probably like asking for IDs. They're trying to match your ID with your ticket. It's it's fine. Like Because, you know, they're yeah. cracking down on the bus yeah. ticket counterfeit ring. Yeah, Greyhound. Yeah. But uh, so you don't what but seriously, like at in that moment, you think these guys work for Greyhound? Yes. Yes, absolutely thought they work for Greyhound. I was like it was like yeah, was like, this is how else? it works. Like yeah, traveling by they... bus is amazing. Why would <laughs> why would why would Greyhound let <laughs> why would they not divert yeah. funding into having what do they look like? Describe them. They they, they look like they were like big. Like, like, picture like, them as they like were big. like yeah, they're like buff guys and they're just like like wearing uniforms and stuff. And they were like, uh yeah, can can we see an ID? And I was like here you go. This is my ID. Are they skipping sorry, people? Sorry, right, were, they, were they going straight at you, or were they doing it to everybody? They asked four people to be specific. Right. Uh, they asked four people. Are you uh, noticing? Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I the the people they asked looked vaguely uh, ethnic. Okay. And uh, that might they're be. They're skipping over people. The, their best can be described like, oh, this person looks Hispanic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they asked me for my ID. I was like, "Oh, I gave them my ID." I'm like, "Oh, gonna, gonna." I was like, "Do you need my ticket?" And they're like, "No." Do you have? Then they were, they were like, "Are you a U.S. citizen?" And I was like, "Oh, that's that's such a weird thing for them to ask." And I was like, "I was like, no, uh, I'm not." And they were like, "Where? Like, what's what's your country of citizenship?" I was like, "Libya." And they were like, uh -oh. "Okay, yeah, can you come with us." <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, "Okay." Yeah. Took you off the bus. I still had no idea who these people were. 
You really, they hadn't identified themselves. No, they didn't say anything when they came in, into the bus. They said nothing. So they took me out. They took two people, other people out. And then the fourth person, they asked, they asked him if he was, he was a citizen. He said yes. And then they were like, prove it. <laughs> and he, he pulled his, his U.S. passport out. And I'm like, this is very weird. Okay. So all the other people passed the check, is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean... They looked at them and they passed. I mean, some of the people they have a proof of citizenship. They had in like their driver's face. licenses. Exactly. And, yeah. And and they were like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Sometimes you can look at a person like oh, a citizen. And you were yeah. like, I'm from Libya and I have asylum, and they're like, yeah. off the bus. But okay. We still haven't even mentioned the asylum part yet because like right. I, I got out, they were like, okay, do you have any other form of uh, ID? I was like, yes. But I, I just want to ask one like I'm a, a comic book nerd, so yeah. I'm like. In panel 14 of issue three, like, because I'm, I'm picturing these guys in a certain way, and I'm wondering, like, so if they're facing you and you're on a bus, and then they're like, you're coming off the bus, as they turn their back and you're following them, do you yeah. not see this logo on the back? Is that, or am I just, do you, like, doesn't it say ice on the back? No. Well, here's, here's the thing. I, I thought, I, there was, I thought they were ice, they were like, uh, CBB, which is like uh, Border Patrol, something. They they're both under Homeland Security, so they work together. Uh, these two agents were that from like that separate agency, uh, which is I'll, I'll get to that part too because that was like very interesting on the internet. Uh, uh, but so I got out with them, and they were like, "Do you have any other proof of uh, like identification?" I was like, "Yeah, I do have my work permit. It's still valid." Uh, it's issued by you guys. Like, cause, uh, I just want to interject one thing because yeah. of social anxiety and resonating with you. Yeah. Are you the only person they pulled off the bus? They pulled two other people they were like interviewing separately because they were like okay. at least six. Because uh, my, my anxiety starts mounting if, yeah. if everyone on the bus is waiting. Oh, everyone on the bus was there. Yeah, there, they were that, just, like, that, that idea of like, oh, I'm I'm like a bad person. Yeah, it was. And yes. they're like, the bus is now going like, come on. Oh, I, that I'm trying definitely to go to... happened. Okay, yeah. so I just I just no, wanted to no, get no, like, a clear <laughs> picture of like if it's just you or no, absolutely. Yeah, it was me and then two other people who were like on the side, and then yeah, they were like uh, I gave them my work permit. I was like here you go, and at that point, okay, I was like okay, these are like they work for immigration. They are like, immigration officers. This is like what I can uh, like I can see now, and then I gave them my my card. They looked at it and they were like, "What's your story? Like, what's your status?" I was like, "Yeah, I have an asylum approved. This is my status." And then they were like, do you have your asylum approval on you? And I was like, why would I have it on me? That's yeah. such a weird thing. I was like, it's three pages with a big card. And I was advised by your office not to carry it with me. Because I could take it. I want asylum. <laughs> exactly. I was like, this is, I was like, this is like an electronic. Because like, it's mostly electronic. Like you can like look it up and then show it to them. And that's it. You don't need to carry a paper with you. If, you, like, if you genuinely have asylum, you have a place to keep your... Asylum it, papers. Exa <laughs> exactly. Yeah, if you're walking around with all your papers, just maybe you're <laughs> just a file cabinet, just like walking <laughs> around, like everything is here. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, so the, what, what what happens next? Like, uh, so I gave it to them. I gave them, and then I was like, I don't have it. I was like, but I do have these papers, and they were like, ah, these can be easily falsified. I was like, what? I was like, no, there's no. I was like, this work permit is fraud proof. Like, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. I was like, since 2011. Uh, you uh, guys updated it, and it you can't change it anymore. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I read your website like almost every day. Uh, oh, they, they, and they love you now. They hated me so much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because you're verbal. Exactly. And they're they were like, were not. <laughs> they were like, really not into me because they use the reason they they target Greyhound bus. It's a very cheap bus, so like most of the people who use it are like, uh, like people are like people like kind of like. People of, a lot of people of color use it in the area. A lot of people who are like immigrants, Hispanic and stuff, they use it so they know where to target. They're not going to like go on a, some fancy bus that's just like uh, wealthy white people inside of it because yeah. that would be inconvenient. Uh, <laughs> so they're there to rumble you because they, 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 they these are ICE, pe ICE officers? So CBB. They're like, okay. they, yeah, they're two different organizations that both of them work together. They basically do the same job. Right. Yeah, they yeah, they're so, both horrible. So they, yeah. they 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 think you falsified your papers or, or like they, they give you your stuff back, right? Still not giving me my stuff back. They were like holding uh, to them and I was like at that point You took like your cell phone and No, they didn't take my cell phone. Okay. Yeah. So they they had like they had my papers and I was like I was like 
no, my papers are legal. And they kept using the word illegal. And every uh, sentence that comes out of my mouth, they were like, yeah, legal say that all the time. Like, no matter that's what probably, I say. That's probably very true, Exactly, I yeah. <laughs> like, and I'm like, I say something, I'm like, yeah, we've heard that before. <laughs> I'm like, what? Okay, uh, whatever. And you damn then, illegals and your story structure get us every time. <laughs> uh, that second act that made us let him go. <laughs> Looks like we got us a talker. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta oh, hold your fucking horses, T.S. Elliot. <laughs> Definitely, you look like an Elliot for sure. Yeah, Part of your Brandon story Elliot. that I saw on Twitter was like, like the point where you have spoken your case, like misunderstandings, whatever. Like let's let's do an NPR segment about what they're going through and what they're profiling and whatever. I I I'd be shockingly sympathetic to whatever the fuck is going on. But you 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 have said I have this, I have that, I have that, and they call it in. Yes. And you can hear yeah, I can hear like it was like a uh, like a woman's voice on the other side. They were like reading numbers out of my uh, my work permit, my like my immigration status and stuff. And uh, I can hear on the phone. They were like, "Okay, yeah, oh, okay, so it's in the system. Okay, yeah, okay." And then looked at me. and was like, "Yeah, there's no records of that." Uh, now, what was that? Let's focus in on that. Yeah, because at I that think point, <laughs> like at that, that point, like I was like really frustrated. I was like, okay, this is like getting because like throughout the whole thing, I was like being calm because I'm like, because I'm like, you know what, this is inconvenient. But once they make their calls and they see that I'm like in the system, just take my papers my mind and go. races as a middle aged white guy and yeah. a, an oppressor and all this stuff. And I go, okay, zoom in. Zoom, zoom, zoom. If I can figure out how to be this guy, and I go, okay. I'm, I don't like to admit uh, making a mistake. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'm flustered. Is that what that what you think that, that is? It felt that way, but also like it felt like they're trying to break me at that point. They're like, okay, if we can't get you on that, we're uh, going to get you on something different. But do you think they really thought at that point that – that's my fascination of what the story is. Like, yeah. Do you think that they thought if they bluffed, you would eventually go, okay, I masterminded 9-11? Or <laughs> do you think that they were like going – one doesn't just get out of this valley with a ladder. <laughs> one needs to create a beach. I, I honestly think it was like both. Because like uh, from what I read and stuff, like they do that to people so they can break down like and just like say they, they've done something or whatever. Uh, and also that, like they're not gonna make it easy. They kinda like wanna leave you with like uh, like yeah, don't fuck with us. Like, right. yeah, have your everything on you next time. Like we're not to to, to be played with and stuff. But like so it got to the like and I they were talking to one another, but they wouldn't. I didn't hear what they were saying because they would do the thing where they whisper to one another, and I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. And then, uh, and then once they told me that I have no records, and I was like, there's no way. Okay, I was like, I was like, you know what? My case is approved. Uh, you know, I think what you're doing now is illegal. And if you don't give me my papers back, I need. I'm gonna call my lawyer. I'm gonna pursue legal action. This is like getting too much. There you go. Uh, this is a terrifying threshold. Yeah. And and even at that, like what, what, said it like very they, calmly because what, what was the, how did that register in their eyes when you said that? Oh, I'm sure they loved it. Immediately, <laughs> once I finished that sentence, the uh, <laughs> officer that hasn't spoken a word the whole time started yelling at me to take my hands out of my pocket. Whoa! Yeah, and By I the was way, like, "What uh, temperature is it?" It was like freezing cold, and they were like wearing gloves <laughs> and stuff. And the thing is, like, I had them in for twenty minutes. Right now, you decided you're hanging out there. Yeah, you're, was, you're both detonators are ready to go. Exactly. <laughs> At this point, no blasters. They're no armed blasters. and ready. <laughs> I mean, for you to like, you're gonna actually put more effort. <laughs> okay, so so you 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 bring up. Uh, you say, hey, you, what you're doing is illegal. I'll lawyer up. And they now are treating you like you might have a weapon on you. Exactly. So I immediately, I'm like, I have watched enough documentaries to know where this is going. And wow. I took my hands out of my pocket. I'm like, hey, here are my hands. Yeah. I kept them out. And then for two minutes, I said nothing. Because I, at that point, it was like, no matter what I say, it's, it's going to be it's like... It's quicksand. You move yeah. more and you go down more. Yeah, they were like looking at me and I'm just like, like not even looking at them at this point. I'm just like looking around and stuff. This is and where I want to like focus in though. Yeah. It's like guy, 46 year old white guy, huge blind spot, doesn't know, didn't know until tonight that Benghazi is in Libya, et cetera, et cetera. All of this stuff. Like I, as a, I, 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 not just as like a curiosity shop thing, but as a transfusion of self esteem, I'm like, I want to know at which point are you going like, 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 where are you at the nadir of like, 
I'm fucked. They got me. Like like not yeah. they got me. Like they caught me doing anything wrong. But but like they the bullies won. I'm yeah. going back home. I was I, I was honestly like I had so many scenarios playing in my in my head. I was like I was like oh shit. What what if they like take my phone? And then I have like no like I was like no one in port like like no one knows where I am right now because I'm like I haven't like I haven't like it was like like very early in the morning I haven't posted anything no one will know where I was taken from. Also, the worst is that they'd be like, "We saw him bombing in this cafeteria and then he <laughs> disappeared." Exactly. Also, like, what if they took exactly. your phone and you went you went through a brief but adventurous phase at the subreddit Gone Wild Audio. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> all I'm saying is once you once Dan, you take Dan, a motherfucker's phone, Dan, let let him, let him finish his. You want to prove they're a bad person? Right, you, okay. you, <laughs> yeah. Mohanan, uh, uh, let, let's let's forget Dan's let's, let's let's forget Dan's here. Let's let's finish this story now <laughs> because this is compelling shit. We're not getting through this uh, because you, you, so you like take us to the end and wait then, a minute. I resent that. I think that I'm providing a pretty good. You don't have to stick up for me. It's I, fine. I, no, shut I, up, Dan. I, Dan, I be quiet. Dan, there's, 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 there's a thing happening. Great I appreciate that. Yes. Thank uh, you. So, so the, the the end of the story, and then you get into a Twitter warfare that goes on. So, like, yeah. take us to the end of that. No, no, no. Wait, wait. wait sorry, sorry. No. No, I, shut I'm up. Not, I'm not trying to high road you, but the story's not done. He's on the sidewalk. No, I'm, he's I'm, freezing. I'm, and I'm he's saying being like, like take, take us to the end of the story, and then get like this is only Act Two, basically, yeah, of, of what's absolutely, going on. Absolutely. Yeah. This is like not even where the story is. Like this is like nothing. Yes. Uh, but if Dan would be quiet for five yeah, seconds, yeah. Fuck you, white, fuck... white man. No. <laughs> Just let him tell the. He's Wait, I got. I got a beef to squash. Excuse me for a second. Shut up. What the fuck you? Shut, shut the fuck up. All right, go ahead. Just fucking you can talk now. <laughs> no, then and then I uh, yeah. After like a few minutes, they gave me my papers back. After like a just silence, and then they were like, "Next time, have your papers on you." And I was like, "Well, I don't know what that means." <laughs> okay, because I had my papers. Yeah, on because me. it's fucking Germany in nineteen fucking thirty. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So I. I got on the bus. Uh, Let me get this straight. You, if you have papers, you can get away from white people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, you how much you, you said three thousand dollars for these papers? <laughs> <laughs> All right, me undies, and we are selling those papers as well here on Harmon Brandon, Town. you are so selfish. <laughs> All right, Mahanan. <laughs> We can start a business together. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so um, they give you they give you your shit back. You're yeah. free to go, but with a warning. Yeah, with, with a warning. Which, which, yeah. which is illegal. No and, admittance of absolutely zero. No matter how minor. Nothing. No admittance. Not of even like, a story. No. Uh, got got you wrong. Nothing. Nothing. Let alone an apology. Nope. Nothing. But Absol- like uh, absolutely, absolutely, like, they were like. Nothing. We yeah. did this, and we were entitled to do it, and we did it, and now get back on the bus. They, I mean, like they looked like. In their, like, if you look at their faces, they've never said the word sorry before. Like, they, I don't know how to describe that. Like, have you ever seen someone, like, seen someone's face? I'm like, you look racist. That's how they looked. Like, seriously. Wait, do I look racist? No. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a brief interjection, yeah, like, I told no. you. <laughs> don't flinch! That makes me look racist! <laughs> Mahana, like, like, like you, you could be an actor and play <laughs> like meme. any ethnicity almost. Like you, you could play, like you, you could play anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I look like a Caucasian, like Germanic dude. I, I had uh, in my passport a bunch of uh, uh, things. I, I visited um, Saudi Arabia and yeah. Yemen and Dubai and and uh, the, uh, the uh, UAE. And no Abu Dhabi. Uh, uh, yeah. Abu Dhabi, <laughs> do. Uh, I've been to Abu Dhabi. Uh, so, but I, I, I had a customs officer, and I look like you know, like like a very white American dude. Yeah. And th- th- they see uh, Arabic in my passport, and the, and the customs when I came back into uh, like LAX. Yeah. The guy's like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. I go. I was in Saudi Arabia. He goes, "Why?" I go. They're one of our allies, and I was performing for the troops. Like, what, what's your fucking next question? Yeah. And, and, uh, but, but, they but, like funded nine eleven. Yes, but, but like, but, so, and, and, so so okay. So all right, but, if you want your next nine eleven funded, you need to let me right. into this country Sorry. now. See, that was my mistake for interjecting. All right, so, <laughs> Mah- Mohanan, so now yeah. take us to take us to the streets where where you get fucking on online and fucking. <laughs> 
get so in trouble. I was yeah, I was on the bus. Uh, <laughs> like I got on the bus first. I texted like uh, like I texted my girlfriend. I texted like like uh, like friends, and we're like, oh my god, you can't believe what happened right now. This and this happened, uh, and then I was like, no one on the bus was talking to me. Like, no one said anything positive or negative, which felt like... Because they all saw you get taken off and put back on. Exactly, yeah. What about the other people? Just curious. The, the, it was you and, like, three people or whatever. Some, well, I came on the bus. Another pe- person came on the bus, and the, the third person they t- took away with them. So I have no so idea. So somebody lost the lottery. Yeah. Like, 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 and everyone witnessed it. Yeah. It's and, sitting in a Greyhound bus. And everyone was just happy that we're finally moving yeah i mean like we see this that the united guy gets stunned baton or somebody like chokes a dog if you're the, s- you're sitting in these seats and then uh, it's very it's very very normalized it felt like this is something like oh yeah we see this every day who cares yeah, yeah. you know like one person was taken but also like cool. when's the revolution supposed to start when, you're you're not you're you're, you're, tr- you're socialized to go like my job is to sit here like like, yeah. like and then people can well come yeah if you, if you hear people on the internet and the responses to my thread everyone was gonna be the hero that day I fucking uh, hate yeah, all yeah. of the internet yeah. Same. Uh, <laughs> you, you'll know why. I guess uh, so, so, so the dust has settled. The bus, the wheels are rolling. You're yeah. on your way to Portland. So yeah, because like no one was talking to me. I was like, it, like I have this thing. I'm like, oh, I, I guess I have to t- tell people on social media. So like I wrote this like whole thread on Twitter, and uh, just like describe exactly what I've I've told everyone. Like what happened. Like, I read the thread. Step. It's fucking crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was just like so. I wrote the whole thing. Posted a picture of like the agents who stopped me and everything, uh, just to prove that this thing actually happened because uh, I took a picture of them like when I was like when I got on the bus they were taking a person so I took like snapped a few pictures of that and like posted that in a tweet as well and then not an hour from that that thread just blew up it was just like going viral like everyone was just like retweeting the whole thing and it was just like getting like Okay, 10k, 20k, 30k, 100k. I'm like, okay, I don't know what. And then out of nowhere, like getting DMs and emails from like uh, like news agency, like everyone, like, hey, can we? I, had you ever had anything like that go that big, like on your Twitter before? I had a dumb tweet about Uber that, was, <laughs> <laughs> that got half a million likes, and, and people that were like, said, "Why are you using Uber?" Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was a joke about Uber, which is I so, saw it, I saw it. Yeah, which is so funny because every like. Uh, Every viral tweet that I write has to do with transportation. That's my my, my brand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it was so, funny. So. The Uber tweet's great. Yeah, but 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 uh, but the, is, is there a feeling there, or is it like 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 because uh, like uh, it, it that blowing up that virality? Yeah, is it? I don't want to lead the witness, and, yeah. and, and so, but it, it, this feeling of like like. You're even people that are on your side are yeah. pushing you. Yeah. That because you became symbolic. Yeah. And you're alone though. There's yeah. there's you're you're being retweeted because people that uh, want your yeah. your experience of it. But it, it does. I don't know what to ask you about that. I'm just like 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 doesn't the fucking world suck? It, the, it, the, the yeah. internet. Like did you like like. I get one of my questions is when you sat back on the bus after having that experience, what was your feeling? But then, as those retweets and viral things started coming in, I guess I'm leading you to say, actually, that was worse because yeah. that's when people started sticking up for me, and that's when shit got abusive. Yes, yes, that's very true. When I got on the bus, I'm not gonna be like, oh, I was like cool or what. I, I was like on the verge of tears. Like, I'm like, I was like, I was like just so upset and so mad because this thing just happened because it felt like really dehumanizing when cuz like you, like you like like in my brain, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm doing all of these things and I'm doing comedy and like people like me and stuff. And then you have like this one brief moment when you're like, is reminded that you're an other. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. oh man. Gotta it's tweet just... this because it's inherently comedic. Otherwise, exactly. what's my job? A- and exactly, so, yeah. You, were you in instant trouble online? Like, uh, didn't you get like death threats and stuff like that? Yeah, I did. And I think one of the reasons, like, like it was like a lot of like big names just like retweeting it. And then. I think the point where it got like really big when uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez also retweeted it and oh, then like ha- like and then wrote her thing and I was like holy shit okay <laughs> this Does is that panic you yeah I was like oh wow okay this is some uh, Congress shit here okay does that make you go like it's out of control like I don't when it got to that point I was like okay this is national right now did you, like, did, yeah. you did you appreciate that or did you think that did you wish that 
didn't get that much traction, where I, you, you, you might get in trouble. There are two, two parts of me. The, like, one part was, like, as a person, I was like, I don't need this. Like, I wish that this didn't happen, that this is inconvenient. But also, there was that other part of me was like, I'm, I'm a person who's, like, privileged enough to have a platform. I'm a person who's privileged enough to have, like, a voice and, like, can speak English well and do all of these things. And this thing that happened to me happens all the time. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm like, I'm like, I, like if I don't speak, I'm like, like this is going to be a story, like, it's going to be thrown away. Because a lot of people were, like, surprised that, right. like, this happens. Absolutely. They had no idea that it was happening and, before. And the, the, the fact that when, like, I, somebody, I, I, I don't know who put that into my eyeballs like uh, someone said you have to read this thread yeah like it might have been like sarah silverman or whatever like like yeah like, I fu- like someone said you have to read this this thread and i read the whole thing and the, the thing that struck me f- first and foremost is that oh you have again an audience and yeah. a voice yes and you get uh a lot of eyeballs on your story but this happens to people that don't have they don't yeah. any recourse or anything and the fact that you're from Libya, you're uh, an asylum seeker, you yeah. are going through this arduous process, and yet you still, as an American, yeah, as far as like le- like legally, like everything is concerned, yeah, you get to make uh, you get to be f- uh, made to feel like the other, and yeah. that you get to feel like you don't belong when yeah. you absolutely fucking do, and then. What about the people that don't speak English and don't have any recourse absolutely. and don't, like and don't actually, have the $3,000 yeah, yeah. to get their shit together? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like, because I, oh, I can't get over that person who was taken away because I'm like, I, he was standing next to me and I don't know if he had papers or not. It's the fact that he couldn't even speak English that well. So he was... He was like being harassed. Like, I don't think he was even like understood what they wanted. Wow. Uh, and it was like, holy shit, this is like disgusting. And then when I wrote about it, like people from Spokane was like, this happens all the time. Greyhound is letting those people, both ICE and both CBB on the bus all the time. They're complicit and they don't have to. They don't have to because like there has to be a warrant or something for them to get on the bus. Are there stories about some bus drivers saying, no, you got to show me some fucking warrant? And- I, think, I think that happens sometimes too. Like, what, like there was two stories where I read like a bus driver like show me the warrant because you cannot get it. And then there was this other story with this uh, Af- uh, African-American lady who stood up, she was a citizen, and when ke- they came in, she started like telling people on the bus, they're like, don't fucking give them your papers, yeah. it's uh, your Fourth Amendment right, and all of this stuff, and they got off the bus. So emotionally, where does that put you right now in terms of like whether, like how do you feel as uh, as a citizen or like your desire to be a citizen here? Like where does that put oh, you? Oh, it does not change my desire by any means because like this is what they want. They want me to leave. They want me to go away, and right. I'm not fucking doing that. And once because once you're a citizen, you're, yeah. you're 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 yeah. you you have a vote and you have everything. I I, I so it's, like, like here's the here's the thing that I I want to gain from you. Yeah. Um, and it's all about me. Is like because I. I am clearly so fragile, so narcissistic, so fucking like like entitled. I'm not used to this idea of people not wanting me around. Yeah. And I this these times we're living in, it's not we're all connected. And I just like I wanna understand I wanna get a self-esteem transfusion from you because <laughs> I don't like I'm ju- I'm just this pud- pud- pudgy fucking like uh, I-, I I'm like well if you don't like me then I'm gonna go away and all this stuff and I'm like yeah I, like what does it feel like so you get back on the bus and then you're like texting your girlfriend you're texting people and and you're like kind of pumped I'm familiar with that chapter of outrage and and like alienation yeah but what I've never been able to cope with is that other chapter where you tweet and you go, this just happened to me. And people start saying like, fuck you. Yeah. Who the fuck are you? Where the fuck are, is your name in my fucking Twitter Absolutely, timeline? Yeah. I, wa- I wish you would fucking die. Like, Absolutely. like I, yeah. I, I, it's not as simple as asking you like, how do you cope with that? Because I've asked that of a million people and they all go, nah, just don't think about it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's. It, I'm not gonna be li- lie and be like, oh, that was like easy to to deal with. It's obviously like something like it's it's definitely hurtful, and I'm like kind of like you kind of like like ah, I wish that wasn't happening. Like it, but it it doesn't make me personally like it doesn't make me feel sad. That they were saying this stuff about me. It makes me sad. I'm like there are some people who are like that vile and that horrible. I'm like I'm just like 
in some sense, I'm like, I feel so bad for you too that you, this is how, you, like, this is how you lead your life. This God, is how I you can't live get there. Yeah. Every uh, day. Yeah. This has always been the thing is that racism is not, um, it seems like it's an incredible accomplishment to those who wish to practice it. <laughs> yeah. They are so impressed. <laughs> I'm by, a third degree racist. They, <laughs> they are so impressed by their systemic racism. They think that this thing that they've built is so awful. And it is awful. It sucks. Yeah. But it is not very smart. It's not very efficient. It's not the best way to do anything. So the way that we who are oppressed feel about it is like it's a fucking mat. Exactly. It's, yeah. It, it goes by your ear. It doesn't stop your spirituality. It certain doesn't certainly doesn't stop you from rising up. Yeah. It's absolutely. just this inconvenience. It's like racism is like people taking the steps out of a set of steps. You yeah. know you're going to get where you're going. You just can't believe a motherfucker would build like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I can't believe these stairs have to, have to go around this guy's guitar pool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mahanad, uh, we're friends with Paul Feig. Uh, Paul Feig has this new thing with, um, with his uh, powder keg thing called Break the Room. Yeah. And then... Uh, you you have a deal with with him with the yeah we'll thing, break right? the room oh yeah, yeah let's yeah. talk about that what is the yeah. break the room initiative yeah I mean like we're we're writing a story that revolves around my uh, like my life and my uh, like kind of like the uh, person of color experience to being in 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 Portland uh, and uh, it's kind of focusing more of like uh, being a person of color like a refugee or an immigrant in a in a place that is like hyper liberal I would right. describe it <laughs> in a liberal bubble that thinks is like the perfect utopia and yet it's 90% and right. it, yeah it's it, the show is gonna be gonna be like kind of like an anti-Portlandia kind of thing right. where it's just like well <laughs> this is this is what you don't see in Portlandia uh, look at all of these people yeah. uh, and like their experiences and stuff because it's definitely an experience that we mean uh, like Yes, I do have my own struggle and I have my own stuff, but also like a lot of people in color, like of color who live in Portland, they share the same experience of just being like uh, a place where it gets too liberal that you're like silenced all the time because you're reminded of like no, this is this is great. Like what what do you mean this is not good? This is like the best way I can describe it is like <laughs> that the uh, that show the the good place where they think that they're in the good place and everyone's like, this is heaven, this is really great. And then, and, and then at the ending, like, oh, this is the bad place. This has been hell this whole time. Oh, God, and no spoilers. One, who cares? <laughs> yes, yeah, th 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 three seasons now. Yeah, uh, because, uh, they, they, because I mean, Portland... And I guess they're giving like, seasons away these days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in my day, you had to retain 90% of the office's audience and you were fucking out. You were back to... All right. Oh, sorry. C continue. Yeah. yeah. All right, stop. That, 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 Portland, like for all, for all of its hyper liberalism, is still like a very white, very kind of closeted. It is. Like I mean, closeted rather. It like, is. Yeah. yeah. It is a different type of racism that you deal with. It's passive aggressive racism. So, That's so what you, you deal you, with. You can f you can feel like an outsider in a very liberal community. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, yeah. And how, how does that daily play out? Like like what's what's the day to day things that happen to you that where you are reminded that you're the other. It is sometimes like when you're like trying to go out like by, by your day and then someone has to bring up something that they saw on the news. Uh, I'd be like, because like I lead, like I wake up every day, like I surprised don't think about what's happening in Libya every day. It's just like I try not to think about it because I'm like, I left that place, so I'm like, it's, it's, I, I'm proud to be from there. I love that it so make much. That you automatically American. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm like, I don't give a fuck about these <laughs> bastards. I, I haven't thought about Libya Those in poor three bastards. years. Yeah. I'm American. Yeah, I even voted for Hillary. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then you have those people I'm like, that come to you and like, oh my God, so I read this thing about Libya today and I'm like, really sorry. Like, this is, must be so terrible. Like, that's me. That's what I, I, I yeah. like, like, that's me if I'm bartending where you drink <laughs> and I know you're from Libya. Yeah, I'm definitely you, doing you're that. You're being Portland right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, uh, yeah. So, but that's annoying It's like, because it's like they're yeah. looking at you as an immigrant. Exactly, because like, there's like two, like, there's like two narratives for immigrants. Like, See, I, I, I thought I, you were Italian when you came on stage. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> think that, yeah. Uh, uh, there are like two narratives when it comes to immigrants because like you have the Republican side where like you're vilified every day, you you, you suck, leave, and then you have like liberals or which is mostly like no matter what you do, they, like sometimes they want you to be the victim so bad, like like it doesn't let you rise because you can't leave because they want to make you feel like 
you need their help all the time. Uh. And once you break through, I'm like, I'm doing it. And they're like, yeah, but you're not a citizen, so good luck with that. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. have to kind of like take you down a bit. I'm like, ah, I feel like you're trying to run away from us. You don't need our help. We have to help you every step of the way because you need us. You need us so much. It's just like this like white savior kind of thing. They're just like, and I'm like, I don't need you. I, 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 can, I can do this on my own. And also like. A word for us. We're socialized to feel that way. It's not easy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, we're I told that we're in charge of the world when we're in sixth grade, and then we're like turned out loose into this world that we don't run. Yeah, I, and we're like, "Where well, are you, everybody?" And and they're like, "Fuck you!" And we're like, "Okay, yeah. I'm, you're racist." Uh, yeah, it's it's very hard to be in charge. <laughs> yeah. God, I'm uh, so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in charge of everything all the time, and I hate it. I created a Plymouth Rock that I couldn't lift. <laughs> I want to help you, Brandon, but you're not poor enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that is. Your, I mean, it, it's. I. I it, it, that, that's one of the many things that I'm like. That, that that idea of like when you, if you're a white American and you encounter someone that you perceive as uh, 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 extrinsic in yeah. any way whether it's by accent complexion or whatever the the most liberal component of the white american i'm speaking for myself has this like impulse to be like i'm going to be an engine of understanding and connection and the way i'm going to express that is i'm going to ask you where are you from and when you say portland i'm going to go no really where where from yeah. and that we're waking up into this world where actually that's you like fucking up and how would you like to I, I it's like a, a uh, uh, I'm done talking but Can I, I ask a, a, you um, uh, Mahana uh, like how oh, sorry go ahead Brandon after you boss no no you take it you, but you're beautiful no but look, <laughs> look, uh, no, no you fucking take it baby alright I'll, I'll, I'll make it quick uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> if I can do it. How is the uh, how is the conduit getting here from the United States? So, like, will you help other people do this now that you're here? The way you know, it's interesting because you seem like you were an ambassador. Will you be yeah. an ambassador for other Libyans trying to get to the United States? Is there are there organizations like that? How can we help? It is. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, now it's very very tricky. Uh, like, because like like. Obviously, like, I do my best to help. I'm not, like, involved in, like, any bigger organization or something, but I'm, like, I'm willing to, like... There are so so many organizations in Portland and stuff that would, like, reach out to me to, like, like what's the best way to help? And I'm, like, I'm, I'm always... Shout them out. What's that? Can you shout them out? Uh, there is there's one organization called ERCO uh, uh, that does a lot of help. There's also Mercy Corps that, like, located in Portland. They do a lot of work, too, with, like, refugees and immigrants. The, those two organizations mostly, like, do a lot of work to help, especially, like, when once you're here, they kind of, like... Mm -hmm. They like uh, help you. Is there places that can be funded? Because actually, it occurs to me that yeah. we, we need to update our. Yeah, Erco uh, is definitely a place that can be Once a month, we update. Be funded. We, yeah. we have how, like do you, how do you spell it? What's, what's it called? It's I R uh, C O. I R C O. Yes. Uh, is anyone up there less drunk and paying attention? I don't know. Like, like one of the. What's your favorite one? Like, if you could, I would, I would go with. Will... I would go with that for sure. Yeah, because this this helps like people like and they and they also provide like a lot of like uh, immigrants like with like even like uh, like people like who have been went through trauma and stuff like that. They get you like a doctor and stuff like uh, shrink and to help you through that. So they they definitely do a lot of work. Did you I love Portland? that you learned shrink. <laughs> yeah. Did, 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 did you did you choose Portland because that was a, a city that was amenable to that uh, refugee process or no? I didn't. Uh, I didn't pick Portland for that because the program I was on, uh, they uh, picked Portland State University for the program. So after the program was done, I was like, well, I'm I'm in Portland now, and I like at least I know a few people. Now, and and right now, like just like t today, like Monday. Are you still getting hate? Are you still getting like threatened and stuff? Oh, or, absolutely. Or, 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 or yeah. like, like, where did your status, like, in terms of your own comfort being here, go up or down, or where are you at right now? Now it's it's kind of like in the middle, honestly. But it's, what do you yeah. do? Wait, you're, let, you're let, like let, almost let, half Dan, my let, age. Dan, let him answer the question. I, 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 like, <laughs> it is. It is. He, he was answering a question I asked him. No, it is in the middle because it feels like some days it goes up and I'm like, oh, everything is is great, and then it's taken down. Like just to go back to your question, like about helping and stuff. The reason that sometimes it is taken down because like, oh, like we're doing well, and then like, oh, travel ban, and Libya is on it, and then like. People can't come in the country, and like my family can't come visit. I can't leave the country. It's just like we're like stuck in this situation. That's just like, what do we do? 
uh, and then uh, some days it goes up because like some days like some things happen and we're like oh like someone cares someone like did something like that and it's just like you kind of like have more hope more like and then something like this like uh, uh, ice and CBB things happen and you're like oh fuck this like is it like this is I hate. All of this. What's, so, is there light at the end of that tunnel for you? Like, is there, is there a, like, like, do you see a place where you go, like, okay, I'm full on citizen. Nobody, nobody can fuck with me anymore. Or, or is that just gonna always be a thing for you here? It's, it's always gonna be a thing. Like, it's like, as a person of color, like, you get a citizenship, and what, what does that matter? Like, you're not, you, like, in the eyes of, uh, of some Americans, you're never gonna be a true American because you're just you're just different you you have an accent you 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 right. you're a person of color you're black you're like you're just like you're never you're never them you're never going to be them and you can have an hbo special and you can still be the other you can still be the other and like to bring it back to where we at at the the whole beginning like with this thing with the with that rapper 21 savage like like this is That's a person bullshit. this is a person who has contributed so much to the community has done like is is super famous and then has the thing happen to them? And like last night at the Grammys, one person mentioned them, and it was a Swedish producer. I'm like, I'm like, what about all of these people? Like this guy is nominated, and he's not there, and not a single person wow. would talk about like because they don't want to make it political. While like someone is just wearing build the wall uh, thing on the red carpet. It's just like it's just they also like didn't, yeah. They weren't really concerned with him until he started doing children's programs in Atlanta. Exactly. And so that's one of the reasons that we're super pissed is that yeah. it's not it's not just uh, a guy. It's literally a guy who came to the United States, made money in the United States and then gave back in ways that citizens don't. Yeah, and like you see the government part of it and then you see the citizens part of it. Like how does this pers person move from there to having some like nobody's just being like he overstayed his visa, he must go like yeah. What do you know about immigration laws to say? Also, what have you contributed to this country? Like, if we want to like take it by contribution, like most of the people will be gone. Like, you've done That's nothing. Exactly right. Well, yeah. we, and we all need to be more easily triggered by that shit. I mean, not to be corny, but that old poem about like first they came for so and so and then they came for blah, blah 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 and it's like that's my narcissistic nightmare. There is a path from narcissism to patriotism to uh, actually defending the the fucking line where it's like actually I don't want to be the guy that is responsible I don't Absolutely. want to be standing on my front porch having everything up to me please make this easy on me please provide me with a country that understands this shit so I don't have to deal with it Absolutely, you can be yeah. lazy and stupid and selfish you can even be a little bit racist my, my grandfather was 17 years old and he, you gotta, uh, there's absolutely no way that the reason he lied about his age to go off and bayonet people in World War II is because he uh, hated uh, racism. It, it, he hated fascism. He hated the idea that being my grandpa wouldn't be up to him one day. He yeah. was selfish enough, narcissistic enough, even misogynistic and sexist enough to take up a bayonet and go, actually, finally, there's a bad guy I can identify with. And like, like, fuck, God damn it, Harmon. You got drunk and you started on your shit. Um, I, 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 anyways, how, how are you? What, what are you, a Pisces? Are you a Pisces? Hey, hey, hey Dan, Dan. I'm actually a no, Pisces. No, but what, 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 yeah, what, what, Dan, what, have, a, have a nap. Have a nap. The one, one thing I wanted to ask you, which may put you on the spot, is after all of this, it's like it's like I, you're a person that has no experience that is parallel to mine. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious because meanwhile I'm like, it, like there's absolutely Break no dancing. there's no synchronicity between our like like rhythms of like. Well, some, first I felt sometimes this way, you're like, popping, like, sometimes you're locking. Sometimes yeah. you're popping a lock Right. And I'm kind of like like I'm I'm t almost twice your age. And I'm wondering, like, what is your feeling about the construct called America? You can decline to answer that question. No, yeah, yeah and I can answer it. Yeah, like the, I mean, like the 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 concept, like on paper, is great. Like if you see, it, this is the perfect nation. But then in practice, uh, most of the things that this country preaches is is not practice. It's mostly practice in like other countries for some reason. They're doing it well. They're taking those American ideals and the American dream are there and they're doing it across the world. Yeah. Which is not necessarily a huge irony. I, I, I like like the uh, I heard this NPR special that I was like hammering on 
I don't even I, I don't even understand what the truly. I guess I'll listen back and I'll find out why. Yeah, you do. I can't wait to. I mean, what is the problem? <laughs> go on. <laughs> okay. I go go ahead. Will you mark this and you'll listen to this point and you'll? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm paying attention. I want to mark this point, and so you're listening right now. Yes. As a sober person, and you're listening to the podcast. Correct. Because you're go, you're listening to I just it. Let let our guest who is interesting talk. <laughs> You keep interrupting him while he's giving interesting answers because you want to talk about your own narcissism and, and you're fucking blowing it. You're, you're, you're making it a giant bummer. Like, like this guy's fucking fascinating and you don't let him get three words out without wanting to talk about yourself again. Okay, well... Uh, no, okay, go on. Uh, go on. Uh, go on. Uh, my opinion is that that is technically accurate, but an exaggeration. <laughs> Cliff Hager! Thank you so much, everybody, for coming to Harmon Town tonight. Give it up for Brandon Johnson. We miss you, Spencer. I, I, we'll see you next time. I, 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 don't, I don't really get it. I, give, give it up for Mohamed Al-Sheki. Fucking fantastic, why? man. I'm Jeff Davis. Here comes Charlotte. Jan Harmon, you're mayor. Jen, Wh- why do you here. come here? Why do you do this show? Huh? What are you doing? I'm come trolling. The show's over. It's 10 o'clock. Okay. All right. Yeah. It, 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 everything went great. All right. Good. Yeah. We, we could have heard oh. more from our guests, but that's all right. All right. Drive fast and take chances. Thank you, everybody. Get any of that? It's a good show.